Hello guys, Lazybeast there. Now, the War Within launch is finally here. You've booked your time off work, or you've just decided to schedule in an illness for the time of launch. You've stocked upon some adult diapers, you've got McDonald's on speed dial, and you've sent your family off for a week of luxury by locking them in the shed at the bottom of the garden. Now it's time to enjoy the week of the launch. This video is filled with tips and information to get you set up to get the most out of launch day and the rest of the first week of the War Within. So where does it all begin? So as we learned from the recent beta event where we tested the launch scenario, you want to go to Dalaran and the room where we've been going off to the Raiding Echoes in the pre-patch event. That is where Khadgar will be waiting for you. And when the expansion goes live, he will have a quest waiting for you that will start off the story of the War Within. Now it did in the beta have to actually pick up this quest from Khadgar. It did not go automatically into your log. So make sure that you are nearby and you can see Khadgar. Good luck, because this room is going to be crowded. And just remember that this is Legion Dalaran, not Northrend Dalaran. So don't be that one guy that goes to the wrong Dalaran looking for a quest, because you ain't going to find it. Now, when the expansion goes live, the quest will pop up above Kavgar's head. So expect this room to be absolutely packed and lagging harder than that one guy who still uses dial-up. After this, there'll be a few quests to complete around Dalaran with some juicy cutscenes to enjoy. And we'll finally be able to see exactly how Dalaran falls from the sky. Once you do that, you'll begin questing in Kaz Algar, the new continent, in the first of the four new zones, the Isle of Dawn. So, it's an exciting time for us World of Warcraft players with a new expansion on the horizon, but also the same for players of Guild Wars 2. So a quick message from today's sponsor. There's a brand new expansion for Guild Wars 2 coming out on the 20th of August, the Janthir Wilds. Now, we in World of Warcraft have just been introduced to Warbands. Now, Guild Wars 2 has very similar systems that respect the player's time through the form of many account-wide unlocks. One thing I really enjoy about Guild Wars 2 is that it's a free-to-start MMORPG, meaning that you can jump in and give it a try in a very accessible manner. This fifth expansion for Guild Wars 2 brings players to the fabled Isles of Janthir in pursuit of adventure and rewarding new experiences. The expansion promises quarterly content releases across the span of a year, so you'll always have something new and exciting to look forward to when you play the game. There's a brand new weapon to look forward to for all professions. Now, professions in Guild Wars 2 are basically classes in World of Warcraft. They just use a different name. So every profession can try out the spear. What I find really cool about this is the whole host of new abilities and spell effects for each of the individual professions. So it's really interesting to see how the different professions make use of this weapon type. Guild Wars 2, the Janthir Wilds, also brings a long requested player-friendly feature housing system, the Homestead. So all your adventures in Guild Wars 2 will lead you to your own homestead, an account-wide personal instance with a structure and land for you to decorate and cultivate. It's so cool, man. When are we going to get player houses and wow, come on, Blizzard. Now, the mounts in Guild Wars 2 are one of the strongest and most acclaimed gameplay features in the game. And there's an updated version of the Warclaw mount that you can actually get your hands on once you buy the expansion. As well as this, there's tons of challenging and cooperative content that you can take part in if you wish to do so. There's a brand new Fractal Dungeon with a challenge mode for 10 player groups. On a bigger scale, you've got Convergences, a new raid with challenge mode as well. And there's three new open world explorable maps. There really is a ton of content to enjoy in Guild Wars 2, and it's got one of the healthiest, diverse and inclusive gaming communities in the gaming scene. There's tons of resources on the guildwars2.com website to help new players get started, and there's even an in-game wiki that you can make use of to find things in game as well. I would highly recommend giving Guild Wars 2 a go if you haven't already. Do click the link in the description to find out more about Guild Wars 2 and the Janthia Wilds expansion and support our sponsor today. So, let's continue looking at the War Within. Now, a little bit about leveling. Just remember guys, there's no need to rush, especially if you are in the early access. What I recommend doing on your leveling journey is focus on the campaign, of course, because you need to complete that as you get to level 80. And if you're not a fan of just chunking through quests, do of course do some dungeons, have a try at the new delve system as well, pick up some treasures, kill some rares, do whatever you want to do as you level up. A tip here though is that the campaign will only get you to around level 77, so what I recommend that you do is when you get to the fourth zone, Ashkehet, uh, I would start to do all the side quests in that zone as well as the campaign quest because rep there works a little bit differently. I'll explain later on how that rep works for the Severed Threads faction. So if you focus the campaign heavily in the first couple of zones, that should get you in a nice decent pace and maybe even a bit ahead of everyone else that's doing other activities too. So you might find that the third and fourth zone are a little bit quieter if you do plan to continuously just play from launch. As far as delves are concerned when you're leveling up, do of course go and try them if you fancy it, but I wouldn't focus on them too heavily because the XP from delves as you're leveling isn't that great. They are quite an inefficient way to level. But of course it is new content, so feel free to jump in there if you do fancy trying something new. Now remember that Season 1 only starts on September the 10th, so really honestly there is no need to rush. Enjoy your leveling experience in whatever way you wish. 
I do have a video with some leveling specific tips, so if you fancy checking that out, check the description for the link to that video. Now one thing you absolutely must do on your initial visit to Dornagul, the new capital, is to go here and get this super rare treasure from standing on this platform for 10 seconds. Trust me, it works every time. So yeah, go and get yourself squashed, you get an achievement for doing so, and maybe even lure some of your friends into this as well. So once you get to level 80, do continue on with the level 80 campaign. Now there is a bit that you get to which requires you to be level 80 to hand in, so once you do this bit, then you'll start the max level campaign, so there's chapter 1 to do of that as well. Now focus on the campaign as far as you can, there will be a bit of time getting because when you get to the third chapter of the campaign, you have to get to level 4 renown with all the war within factions but in order to carry on. Focusing on the campaign is going to unlock all the reps with the different factions for you. It's also going to be part of unlocking the new Earth and Allied race. And there's also, for those guys, three new side quest chains to complete as well if you want to unlock those. And then there'll be a scenario which you've not yet seen, which will culminate in you unlocking that new Allied race. A short way into your questing in Ashkehet, the fourth zone, which is the furthest zone away from Dornagul, and also the deepest one in the Isle of Dawn, you will unlock a portal from the faction hub in Ashkehet all the way back to Dornagul, which is a massive time saver, so make sure you unlock this and just familiarise yourself with exactly where it is. If you plan to level alts in the War Within, then do make sure you get a character to level 80 first, because for every character that is level 80 on your account, you get 5% bonus XP, which stacks for all your other alts. So this goes up to 25% bonus XP across your account. So because of that, it does make sense to level up characters one by one, but what I would say is, do make sure that you log into each character that you plan to level on launch, because that will then open up their XP bar again and allow them to start earning rested experience. So don't forget to do that for your alts. So level up your main and level up any of your alts in the first week and then you can focus heavily on the reputations if you wish to do so because there's quite a lot that gets unlocked from reps. Notably, you know, mounts and pets and transmog things but there is also gear that you can get at certain renown levels. A decent piece of gear, especially early on before the season starts and when the season does start, this will see you through quite nicely. All of these side quest chains in the zone reward you with a nice chunk of experience when you finish the side quest chain, so I do recommend going around and doing all these side quests in each zone. I know to some of you that will seem like a big slog, but week 1 and week 2 really are going to be very chill for this expansion, so it does make sense to focus on these things at this time. Once you're level 80 and you're just stomping around the zones, do make sure to kill all the rares that you come across, at least once each, because they do give rep tokens as you kill them. I highly recommend the Handinos add-on for this, as it's going to allow you to keep track of the ones that you've already killed, and have them marked on the map for you so you can find them nice and easily. Before you start to clear up all the world quests on the map as well, don't forget to get a contract off the auction house for one of the War Within Factions. I would probably recommend doing this for the Seven Threads if you can, but honestly any of these, if you have a specific faction that you want to focus on getting rep with, that you've got a certain reward that you prefer, let's say it's a profession recipe, then feel free, go ahead and get a contract for any reputation if you want. This will of course give you some bonus XP when you complete world quests for that faction that you've got the contract with. Now, in each zone, there are also some lore objects scattered around for the various factions. These are a one-time loot per account, and you get 250 rep per item, so these are well worth going around and picking up. If you check out the guides for the achievements on Wowhead, you will find the coordinates and things for where you can see these lore objects. So definitely go ahead and collect these as well as you go through. So you've got to level 80 already, you are focusing on your reputation. What else should you do? So there are weekly quests in the Khazalgar zone. There's a dungeon weekly quest, so do get that and complete it if available. And there's also all the world events that you should definitely complete at least once. Now the War Within has gone quite heavy on world events. It seemed like in Dragonflight initially we had the Siege on Dragonbane Keep, we also had the Iskara Soup event, and it kind of follows a similar fashion in the War Within. So we have four different events, different world events, and one of those is in each of the new zones. So first of all in the top zone, the Isle of Dawn, you've got the Earthen Theatre. Now this takes place of course in the Isle of Dawn itself, it's very similar to the time rifts that we saw in Dragonflight, so it's an outdoor event, there's lots of different mini tasks that you'll be assigned when you complete in the event, it culminates in a final theatre show and then you get your rewards based on the contribution of you and those completing the event with you. So it's nice and simple, it's very very similar to the time rifts as I said from Dragonflight. You can see on the map where this event is and where it's going to start as well so you can check and just make sure that you do do this at least once per week. The second event is called Awakening the Machine, now this takes place in the Ringing Deeps. With this event you basically have to fight off waves of enemies, now you're assisting a guy called the Speaker and you've got to keep him alive while he conducts the Rites of Awakening. This event happens in waves and after every fifth wave you get to choose a new power that will assist you in defending the Speaker. So think Torghast powers. 
This event appears to go up to 50 waves, and then the final wave after killing that 50th wave will be a boss, the Awakened Phalanx. Now, if you kill this guy, you're going to get an achievement, which rewards a mount, so definitely worth aiming for this as well. There's a third event, which I don't currently know much about, but it takes place in Hallowfall. It should be located in the Lights Redoubt area, where the towers are unlit, so the dark area just before you get into the fourth zone, as you The event seems to be all about keeping the towers lit as best you can, and fighting off enemies such as the Naruba, which are trying to get up from Ashkehet. Increasing your renown with the Hallowfall Arathai, which is the faction for the Hallowfall zone, of course, is going to make you more efficient when you complete this event, so you can get things like you know, buffs and consumables, it will aid you in your fight, allowing you to be more successful and efficient when you do the event. I couldn't actually test this on the beta, hence why I don't know much about it, so do check your map for the Spreading the Light event in Hallowfall. It's very likely that when you level in initially and you do the quests in the Hallowfall area, that you will get a quest that takes you to this area and introduces the event to you, so do be mindful of that when you get it, but when you can do the event, just complete it. Now the final sort of event, if you will, are the Ashkehet Packs. Now, the Severed Thread reputation works differently as I explained, so basically the way it works is, you have three leaders of the Severed Threads, and they each have their own renown bar. It's kind of like how the reputation worked with Soridomi from the Time Rift, so she had different levels of renown specifically with herself, with different unlocks specifically with her as you got through her level of reputation. So doing activities within Ashkehet will earn you reputation specifically with one of these three leaders. Now to get a level of renown with the Severed Threads, you need to increase your reputation with one of the leaders a full level. So for now, it seems that currently you can't actually directly get Severed Thread's reputation. So if you're wondering why you are doing activities in Ashkehet, but that bar never goes up, it's simply because you've probably got a nice spread of XP and reputation on three of the different leaders and not actually with one specifically to make it level up a full level, if that makes sense. So the weekly component here is that every week you can choose to devote yourself to one of the leaders and create a pact with them. So this pact is warband bound, so you can't choose a different pact on any of your alts. Once you choose your pact on one character, that is bound to your account for the entire week, so choose your pact carefully. Once you decide who to form a pact with, World Quest will then spawn in Ashkehet, and you'll get a weekly quest to complete various activities for the leader that you've chosen. Leveling up your reputation with the individual leaders will also allow you to access various perks and things with that leader. So the various like world buffs. If you think about this in a similar way that the Klaxi work in Pandaria, so you can choose a champion to be with for that current period of time and they provide you various benefits in combat and such. So these seven threads packed and leaders work in a similar way. So on the theme of world quest, there are also these things called special assignments. So once you make it to level 80, you should notice special assignments on your world map in each of the zones. You'll need to complete three world quests to progress a special assignment. And once you've done that, you'll get access to an elite quest as well. So completing that elite quest will complete the assignment and reward you with some gear, gold, valor stones and crests for upgrading your gear and potentially other cosmetic rewards too. There is what's called a World Soul Weekly Quest that you'll get from Dornagal. So make sure you choose one of these and it allows you to choose what specific type of content you want to do. So pick whichever suits you and make sure you complete that quest in the week. Now in terms of gearing up, normal dungeons don't really seem to be worth it. What you should probably do is focus on the world content like quests and getting gear from treasures and rares as well because also by doing this, you're gonna be getting reputation too. Aim to get to item level 571 because this is what you need to be able to queue for random heroics. So the heroics do reset each day, by the way. So if you are interested in getting the best gear available, you should focus on doing your heroic world tour pretty much every day as your top priority. You can get around item level 571 gear from doing world quests as well. So this is why it's probably not the best idea to focus on normal dungeons unless you've got no other source of gear available, which shouldn't really be the case. Remember as well, you can kill rares each day as well to get reputation. So if you are doing this too, you're likely to get some gear from this as well, which is again, a comparable item level. Now, as far as delves are concerned, remember that delves are gonna have their own seasonal progression, which is not available, of course, until the season starts. So you can only do tier one to three at the start of the expansion, which is fine because tier three delves do give decent gear as well. So do get the weekly quest for completing delves and make sure you've got a restored copper key if you can, before you do any bountiful delves so that you can actually loot the chest at the end of them. You need a hundred copper key fragments to make one key. Once you've got your fragments, just right click it and you'll make your key. Now remember bountiful delves don't actually unlock until you get to level 80. So 
If you did want to just wait until you get to level 80 before doing delves, feel free to do that as well because you're not really missing out on anything if you don't do the delves while you level up. And you also usually get a quest to go and complete the delve from somewhere within the zone that the delve is in. So it's just basically a quest called delve such and such a thing. So once you've got that quest, completing the delve will reward you with some nice other rewards simply just for completing the delve the first time. So you can do this again if you want to while you level up because they do reward some nice XP. But don't worry if you do these when you're at level 80. When you're in the delves, do try to get all these sturdy chests. There will be four of those on average in each delve. They give a decent amount of crystals, which you can use to buy various items. And they contain other items as well, such as the curios that Bran uses to level up his abilities. So yeah, I would recommend doing each delve on tier three if you can, at least once per week, pre-season one. Remember, of course, when the season does actually start, delves and other types of world content will of course progress your weekly vault. But the weekly vault is very likely to not be available and only comes out when season one actually starts on the 10th of September. So again, do chill with this guys don't feel the pressure i know i'm giving you tips on what to do and what you should focus on but literally play the game however you want i know there's still going to be some people in the comments saying her her this guy is telling me what to do and what to focus on but guys honestly just play the game however you wish and have fun in whatever way it works for you so in summary take your time enjoy the expansion launch you don't have to go too hard there's loads of time pre-season to level up do all these world activities and polish off those side quests gain some reputation and start working on some of the other expansion achievements if you wish to do so Ooh, one thing i have forgot to mention though is to not neglect your professions so i would recommend grab your professions as you enter dawn of for the first time unlock the war within version of your professions of choice and then start to work on those and gathering profession knowledge as you do your adventures in the war within Professions seem to be a little bit more streamlined than they were in Dragonflight, so it shouldn't take you quite as long to fully max out whatever you want to in your chosen professions, but still it is going to take some time and commitment, and it's something that you don't want to end up feeling behind on if you leave this for like week 3 or something, so yeah, professions, just work on them as you enter the expansion. Do also make sure to keep your add-ons updated too, as there tends to be quite a lot of changes and updates around these times, and this should help you avoid any add-on issues. So, providing these servers are alive, the launch of the War Within should be a relatively chilled one. We can see where the story takes us and get used to the new zones and find out where everything is, as well as seeing the new dungeons before we're able to tackle them on Mythic as well. I will absolutely do a guide for week 2 of the expansion once we know how everything is and if there are any tips to share for example and other things that we should focus on and also stay tuned for the season 1 gearing guide that I'm going to prepare before that comes around too. So feel free to subscribe if you haven't already and leave a like on the video if you did find it useful or if you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching guys, I've been LaserBeast, I will catch you next time and by the time of the next video the War with an Expansion will have gone live so do enjoy yourself, I wish you all the best in the expansion. Take care guys, I've been LaserBeast and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.